the ancient times, women have been assigned to cleaning. It is no secret that men have always had plenty of opportunities, but the woman's dream was limited to mops and other cleaning supplies. The surface forms a pattern. There are marks, scratches, that create lines, bits and curves in a continuous motion. It's like a never-ending line. When I say surface, I think about a big puzzle. Each piece matches with a different piece, all because of these small bumps and connections. At the touch of the mop, there are different traces left, like an imprint. The combination of wet and dry forms a path. Where does it all start? Everything depends on the movement, and the movement depends on the mood. You can tell by the wet patches on the surface, the pattern left by the person who used the mop. How was he or she feeling? while cleaning. A calm, relaxed person would make a symmetrical pattern with the mop, being more careful to clean every part. An angry, stressed person maybe, someone who was having a bad day, wouldn't use the mop the same. The movement would be rushed, scattered, leaving a different pattern. It's such a simple task, it even can get boring. But if you take a closer look and think a little bit about the process, it can get very creative. Mop is often ignored. Nobody really thinks of it. Everybody has one and it's always there. Underrated. The mop is actually cleaning our mess every time we need it to. It helps us on a daily basis so much, but nobody thinks of it. I see so much of a mother when I think about this, and it's the hurtful truth. How is the mop? Physical, maybe it can be rough and soft, durable, twisted, knotty, tangled. It is of course long, movable, but also stable. It really has a weird form, and at the touch is not a pleasant material. Talking about the color and the tones, that dirty and dull gray, often associated with depression, it really is an emotionless and moody color. I divided the mop into three different parts. First, the stick. It's supportive, durable, keeps everything under control. Second part is definitely the connection point, and I call it the middle thing. And the last part, the defining feature of the mop. Tangled, rebel, crowded. When you think about part one, two, and three, they are useless separately, but necessary together. In my opinion, the woman's breasts are the desire for intimacy. Also, in a family, the mother reflects stability, balance, a safe zone. It is unlikely to associate such a basic object, like the mop, with such a powerful human being. Of course, a woman should be associated with a flower or a mountain, not a mop. But there are things that people should think about, red flags that everybody should reflect on.